Hello everyone, today we are going to solve problem 20 of chapter 18. So if the force 200 Newton is being applied to our system and the 15 kilogram uniform rod starts from rest, so that's an important information starting from rest, which means that the initial velocity, the initial angular velocity is zero. Determine the rod's angular velocity at the instant just before theta is 45. So before theta is 45 is the position. So when we have the angular velocity at the first position, we want to find the angular velocity at the second position. That's the typical work and energy problem when we are talking about positions, not about the time, not after five seconds. So we can, uh, let's write our uh, known values and unknown values. So we know the initial angular velocity would be zero. The final angular velocity is unknown. We said we are going to use work and energy, so the initial kinetic energy plus the work that is done on the sample would be equal to the final kinetic energy. The initial kinetic energy would be zero as the omega one is zero. We need to find the work that is done on the sample. To help us find the work, let's draw the first position and the second position. That's the first position. And then at the second position, our rod would be on that 45 uh, incline. So we have our force F, which is 200 Newton. Also, we have the center of gravity here that is moved to the incline surface. So we have two components of force. The force that is done by the work that is done by force P, which is PL, is at this point is moved the whole length, P is L. So magnitude of P is 200, L is 0.6 meter or 600 millimeter, so it's 100 newton meter or joule. The work of the weight, for the work of the weight, we'll look at the center of gravity. We can see that it's negative because the force is acting downward and the displacement is upward, mg, y, the mass is 15, G, we are in SI, so 9.81. And then we need to find Y value. So let me draw it again here. So if this distance is 0.6, half of that would be 0.3. This angle is 45. And the center of gravity has moved Y. So that would be 0.3 sine 45. So if I write it again here, that would be negative 15, 9.81.3 sine 45, which will give me negative 31.22 Newton meter. So I found the work that is done on the sample. Now I need to find the kinetic energy. So it's our system has one component, only the rod. So, but the rod has both rotational component and also the linear component of the velocity because the center of gravity is, will have a velocity as well. So kinetic energy at position two would be half of IG, which would be the moment of inertia about the center of gravity plus the linear component the velocity of center of gravity. So if I write here, IG about center of gravity would be 1 12th ML squared. I'm going to factor uh, half an omega. Then I will have M. VG would be R omega. So R squared and the whole thing is omega squared. So I have the mass of the slender rod, I have the length, but what is this R? So if you look at the problem, it's not immediately obvious about which point this rod is rotating. But we know we can find the instantaneous center of zero velocity if we have the velocity directions at the two points on a rigid body. And as the name suggests, it's instantaneous center of zero velocity. So IC will change as the rod is moving up the inclined surface. 
But the good thing about work and energy method is that I don't need to know Omega at every single instant. I just needed to know at the initial instant and the final instant. So we are interested in finding Omega at the final instant. So we are gonna find central zero velocity. Let's see, this is our rod. I know the velocity of this point would be in this direction and the velocity here is going to the inclined surface. Now I need to draw a perpendicular line to these two. I know this angle is 45, therefore this angle would be 45 degrees. This is perpendicular, so this would be 45. So when we have 45, 45 degrees, that means that this distance is the same as this distance. So if I draw a cleaner image, I want to find this is G, this is IC, and this distance is 0.3. This distance is 0 0.6. There isn't a 0 0.6 because it's 45, 45 triangle. So the two distances were the same. So now I can find R I C G. So R I C G, which would be 0 0.3 squared, 0 0.6 squared. So that would be 0.67. So in my equation here, R is actually R I C from instantaneous center of zero velocity to center of gravity. Now that I find R, I have everything except omega. So let's write our equation T2. I'm factoring half omega squared, 112, M is 15. 0.6 squared plus m again, also r would be 0.67 squared. But the only uh, unknown would be omega. If I write t1 plus u12 equals t2, here is zero, u12, I had two components. 120 was the positive one, the work of the force, negative 31.22, the work of the weight, also the final kinetic energy, which would be based on the angular velocity of the rod. The only unknown is omega, so that would be 4.98 radian per second. Omega 2, let's write omega 2. So the only challenge of the problem was to find IC or to know that you need to include the velocity of center of gravity as well. Uh, or alternatively, we could write only I, IC omega squared. If you write the moment of inertia about a fixed point, I see, then you don't need to include the velocity of center of gravity and it would give you the same thing because you need to use parallel access theorem. So you can think of this as a parallel access theorem as well. And you would give, you would get the same answer. The other important thing to pay attention is that I see changes is instantaneous. But we are only interested in the very final instance where the rod is on that 45 uh, inclined surface.